pin with the arrow. I missed that. Yeah, it's it's up here to the northwest. Or north, I guess. There we go. Look at this. And Lots of beer. All right, grunts. What you got? Onwards. You can jump. Okay. Oh, we got a squad leader here. Thank you, Mr. Squad Leader. Send. Yes. I came. Send pie. I wanted. Uh. How do I, how do I, okay, I built a base one time, and I put down, uh, you know, garrisons, hey, but they didn't the have AI, even though we had all, I think I had all the stuff. What do I actually yes, do? Uh, yes, miss. Uh, yeah, one second. Yes, I am oh, about God, to miss. teach a full class on the basic part of the game. Let's uh, do whereas, it. So, whereas, uh, whether or not your base has AI is uh, affected by the up, uh, level of the base. AI, Jesus. So... Uh. Yeah, there's AI defenses in this game. There's certain buildings that if God. you get too close to the enemy building, the building itself will shoot at you. It's a fox of looking things. Right. Awesome. Well, I don't so yeah, whereas what what's going on is you have to uh, upgrade the base a little bit to get that AI. And uh, how far upgraded it is changes what affects the AI. If uh, you so have like shirt, a... does that also affect it? Like if the AI actually is there? No, actually, you can have a base with no shirts at all, and the AI can still be active. What do you uh, mean, shirts? thing is, if it's uh, I'm gonna, shirts is going to be the first thing I'm going to cover when we get forward here. All right. Well, I built okay. an entire bunker base, and the AI didn't shoot the enemy, so I don't know how to, you know. Yeah, it just needed to be upgraded. All right, so uh, where were we talking about? Oh, yeah, jumping. So, like I said, jumping and climbing stuff can be kind of buggy, especially climbing things like these rocks you see over here. Uh, so, if you ever get stuck trying to climb something, there's a few tricks you can try. Uh, first, you could just sit there and spam the space bar away from the item and just kind of run at it at a slightly different angle, and sometimes that'll get you up there. And if you take a look at those rocks over there, you'll see there's some places where they kind of go oh, down dude, into look, the ground. A... Uh, yep, there you go. <laughs> Wait, so, I, yeah. I... Uh, what so, what like... are things you can't climb? Uh, just it's a matter of height more than anything, but uh, no matter what you do, climbing is a little buggy, so it can be real frustrating. But things like these little projections on these sandbags make it easier to climb, too. Alright, so if you hold down your shift key, you can sprint. Now, the gear that you're carrying has weight, so the more stuff you carry, the slower you move. And if you're at 100% encumbrance, it will prevent you from sprinting. How do you uh, tell you could, that? You could tell your encumbrance. Gotta go fast. E. Gotta go fast. E and look in the top right corner. Ah, got it. Thank you. Sure thing. All right. Neurom. Sorry. All right. So if you look inside these two blue boxes here, they contain what's called soldier supplies. Uh, this is also what we call shirts, just because of the icon. Uh, and when we're sending text messages, we'll refer to them as SS. Uh, this is one of the most important items in the game. These act like a spawn counter. So the way that works is you have to go to a base, such as this encampment that's over here, and set this as your spawn location. So to do that, you just walk up to the tent and press E. And you're going to see a button that's shaped like a house at the very bottom of the center panel. And once you click that, this becomes your spawn location. And from then on, you're allowed to respawn here as long as there are shirts in the stockpile of the encampment. And it uh, will consume one of those shirts every time you respawn. But this only works if they're in the stockpile. It does not work if they're in the inventory of the encampment. And you definitely don't want to walk around with them in your backpack. They're very heavy, and they do not provide you any benefit for carrying them. Can I ask a question? Ah! Your mic! My ears are bleeding! They're bleeding! Mine? Dude. Yeah! Dude. I was... This is bad, Teletubby. Okay. There, is it, is it, uh, is it better? Much better. Okay. Bad. No, that's here's, right. my, here, here's my noob tip. If you click options in the escape menu and go to voice, you can turn the output voice uh, volume down and it'll turn everybody down. So it's less yep. your rate. 
You can also alt click somebody to voice mute them if they're an obnoxious twit. Oh, dude, that's <laughs> huge. That's a that's <laughs> <cool. laughs> ten out of ten. So, so actually, real quickly, because there's so many of us here, uh, I will pause uh, pretty much at every section and ask you guys if you have questions. So let's hold the questions until I pause. Uh, how does my mic sound now? Yes, sir. Yeah, otherwise, this uh, tutorial will take like two hours instead of 30, 40 minutes. <laughs> Got it. How do I sound now? So, sorry, yeah, you sound fine now, Teletubby. Okay, so uh, I was saying that the shirts have to be in the stockpile of the encampment, not the inventory. So the difference between the inventory and the stockpile is the inventory can only hold a small number of items, like a few dozen, really. Uh, but you can instantly transfer things between the base inventory and your backpack. Uh, the stockpile can hold many, many thousands of items. But you can only withdraw one item at a time, and it takes several seconds to withdraw it. Uh, unless you're in a vehicle. Uh, but because of the game mechanics and how the supply system works, pretty much all newly created supplies that come up from the factories go into the stockpiles of bases. So what that means is when you go out to fight, you're going to go up to the front lines and locate a base similar to this, set your spawn location there, then withdraw any weapons, ammunition, and other gear that you need to go fight from the stockpile of the base. A very common mistake that new players make is they take too much gear into combat with them, especially ammunition. Uh, we generally recommend that you just take one weapon, so like a rifle or a submachine gun, and two, maybe three magazines of ammunition. Uh, it's also a good idea to take one or two bandages with you, and I'll explain those uh, later on in the tutorial when we talk about medical gear. Uh, all other gear is optional and not really necessary. Uh, it's very dependent on what your current situation is. Uh, so like when you're attacking, it's always a good idea to have one or two grenades. Uh, if you're defending, it's definitely a good idea to have a gas mask. All right, so any questions? Is there any sort there of a medical system like bandages or anything? Yes, and I'll be going over that right after the weapons portion of the tutorial. Okay, Good I got point. a question. Uh, is there any way to, like, rearrange the things in my inventory? Not easily. All, the only real way to do that is to, like, uh, transfer them back and forth between another inventory. Or okay, to drop them that. on the ground I'll and just, pick them back up. I'll just, I'll, I'll just have to live with my, like, weird inventory. Yeah, uh, that kind of stuff bothers people like me because I like things to be organized. <laughs> yeah, me too. I got a question. Okay, so yeah, just, just to reiterate, okay, so... Inventory is just for like say the tent. The stockpile is for like the whole base. Uh, so the inventory of the base itself is just a very quick access inventory. So often uh, we go out and like scavenge weapons from dead bodies and stuff, and we'll stick them in the inventory of the base. That way you could just grab, run up here when you respawn. You could just grab that weapon and go fight real quickly. Uh, the the actual stockpile holds an outrageous amount of stuff, like tens of thousands of items. Uh, but it's just limited on how quickly you can pull those items out. Ah, I see. So it'll take longer to take it out of like the stockpile, per se. And exactly. Can can like can like the enemy target the stockpile and destroy it? No, they just target the base itself. The enemy cannot access our bases. Uh, but if they destroy it and then repair it, they actually can steal some of the gear that was in the base. Uh, in the stockpile? Uh, yes, and I think even stuff that was in the inventory, uh, that usually actually drops on the ground outside the base when it's destroyed. Kind of like in these crates. Kind of. Uh, it's a different shaped for crate, but yeah, it's similar. Okay. Uh, I did forget to mention the actual reasons why you don't want to take too much gear into combat with you. So, first off, it just weighs you down and makes you move slow. You do not want to move slow in combat, especially as a colonial. Uh, one of the advantages that we have is most of our gear weighs a little bit less than the Warden's gear, so we're generally able to move faster than they are. Huh. That's so you don't. Cool. Yeah, so you don't want to take away one of our edges over. Maneuver warfare! <laughs> yeah, also, uh, you can loot dead bodies in this game. So if you have a ton of gear on you and you die on the front lines, you're just delivering supplies to the enemy. And uh, if you do blow through all your ammunition, you can usually just loot a dead body to get more. Or you could just walk back to base. The bases are normally fairly close to the front line. 
All right. Uh, does anybody else have any more questions before we move on to the weapons range? I have a slightly off-topic question. Uh, is there an etiquette for joining squads? Like, I see a lot of global squads. Uh, if we join, node in. Oh my god. Kick people from squads, or is it pretty much just friendly in that yes, sense? It, uh, most of them are pretty friendly and are welcoming to people joining the squad. Uh, it is possible to kick somebody out if they're being a jerk. Uh, there are both locked and open squads, as you might see. And uh, squads are not the same thing as a regiment. Uh, a regiment is kind of our version of a clan or a guild. Uh, so all the regiments run squads, but you can join their squad without joining the regiment. And in fact, that's how most of them do their... Gotcha. Okay, you got Thank any you. tips for a solo player? Uh... Yeah, well, you're a little bit more limited in the things you could do effectively, but really you could do anything in the game as a solo player. Uh, just some is more difficult to do. Uh, so, like, you're definitely not going to pull off a full D-Day style beach landing as a solo player. <laughs> but right you can on, join yeah. in. You can absolutely join into somebody else's beach landing and do that. You yeah, know, like yeah, legit. Yeah, yeah. And like logistics is a little bit more difficult when you're playing solo, unless you just do like a small part of it. Okay. Uh, I see. What about like base building? Is that like pretty much impossible? Uh, as a solo? Oh, it's not impossible, but you're gonna have to be patient as hell. It'll take you like days to build a base. I uh, okay, I gotcha. Uh, building just one single portion of a bunker. What would you say the most seconds. effective role is for a solo player? Like uh, like a defense guy or like? Or, uh, are you talking? Uh, are we talking combat uh, support or what? I don't know. Like yeah, what do you what do you think a solo uh, player is best we'll utilized find out. as? As a new player, medic. Okay. Or logi okay. or logistics. Uh, with logistics, uh, you could do like either just go all the way to the back lines and just uh, harvest raw resources and turn them over to other people. Uh, or you can work where the factories are and the warehouses and get supplies, put them in a truck, and deliver them to the front lines. Uh, those are both things that uh, solo players could do fairly effectively. Gotcha. I think I want to do probably a medic. That may be a fun way to kind of get close to the action while kind of seeing more of what's going on without getting shot. No, let's move on. Well, he speaks for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's cruise on up this way. Athleticism! <laughs> so you can jump off of things. There is so something roughly double that height, uh, you run a pretty good risk of being hurt. Like the height of the fences. Yes, almost exactly the height of the fence, actually. All right, to climb a ladder, just Ooh, press space and hold down W. Ladders are actually not that common in the game. The majority of them are on the sides of bridges to allow you to climb out of the water. Uh, hopefully before you drown. Man, I'm getting lost with all the people. I'm like, who the hell is who? Yeah, you're going to find that happens a lot. Uh, especially when you're doing like suicide rushes with HE grenades, it's real easy to figure, lose which one's you. I wish you can customize that, kind of, at least a little. Uh, the only real thing you can do is that you're the only one without a name tag. And sometimes if you're moving the big bat batch of people, just kind of like turn off to the side or just stop moving and you'll see yourself stand out. All right, Am I so losing sight of large groups of people because of lag or because I have a field of view? Field of view. Uh, terrain blocks line of sight. All right, actually, uh, before we start up here, you might want to turn down your sound effects. Uh, if you hit uh, options, uh, just look for SFX volume. Uh, and if you turn that down, you'll be able to hear me a lot easier over the machine guns and stuff. And then you can turn it up later if you want to. All right, so each one of these tables contains a different weapon. Uh, the weapon is in the box on the left side of the table. The ammunition for that weapon is in the box on the right side of the table. Different weapons do require different ammunition, so you always need to make sure you've got the correct ammo when you go into combat. Uh, there is a tooltip over the weapon icon that will tell you what type of ammo it requires. Right, is, there an easy way to, uh, is there an easy way to get into one box or the other? Because I find that when I'm trying to open one box to get ammo, and up shift. Just... Yeah, hit shift E. Oh, that's awesome. Is there an 
the good weapon for beginners. It's pretty good uh, for beginners. Yeah, I will describe all the different weapons after I go through basic combat. Alright, so everybody grab a weapon, come up here and start firing. Uh, if any of you have any trouble trying to figure out how to use the weapon, let me know and I'll walk you through it. Make sure you reload first. Yeah, yeah. yeah minor detail. When you're aiming, so like let's say I'm aiming past the dummy and there's like a big red line, does that mean it's not hitting the target? You have to aim right at the target? Uh, the red line means that your fire is being blocked by the target past that. Uh, target. Alright, so the first thing you're going to notice is that your uh, crosshairs are growing and shrinking. The size of your crosshairs represents the accuracy of your weapon. So the bullets do not fly perfectly straight, they spread out a little bit in the cone. Uh, okay. the, amount that, uh, the amount that they spread out is equal that's some good suppression, soldier. You mind stopping for a bit? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, they are a little bit deafening. <laughs> Wait till you get into actual combat with multiple machine guns and tanks and artillery all the way around. Alright, so there are some things that will give you a little bit of a bonus to your accuracy. And what I mean by that is just that your crosshair shrinks faster. So first, you can crouch by pressing C. Also, you can lay prone by pressing X for a little bit larger bonus. And finally, if you are in cover, you get an extra bonus. So if you crouch directly behind the sandbag, uh, you'll get a bonus both for being in cover and for being crouched. If you're like at the end of a sandbag, you can kind of crawl and peek around it. What is this like graph I'm seeing on the side of my screen? Alright, that weapon stability only appears here in the tutorial zone. And all okay, it represents, the only thing it represents is how fast your crosshair swing. So when I say that you get a bonus to your accuracy, what I actually mean is you're getting a bonus to your weapon stability. Now there are some things that will reduce your weapon stability, which is when you move and fire, and also if the enemy is shooting at you. That will reduce your accuracy, and it can strip you of your cover. So that's basically how suppression works. Alright, so everybody hold fire for just a moment. And this is the most important part that I teach in the whole tutorial. Take your weapon and just aim it as far away from you as you can towards the top of the screen. And now move your mouse along the edge of your screen all the way as far as you can into the corner and just sweep it back and forth all across the top of your screen. You're going to see that it zooms out when you get to the corners. This is critically important. You can shoot and see further by aiming at the corner of the screen than by aiming at the top center. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, uh, so new players all the time get confused because they're getting killed by people they can't even see. And that's because the new player is not looking at the corners. So you want to rotate your screen so that the corner of your screen is facing the enemy. Uh, there are two different ways to rotate your screen. You're going to hold down your middle mouse button and move your mouse. Uh, you, can wow. the, uh, the, you can also use the period and the comma key. The advantage of period and comma is that works while you're aiming. So because of that, a lot of people actually remap period and comma either to some mouse buttons or to Q and E. Uh, if you do try to remap it to Q and E, you're going to end up remapping about half the keys in the game. And it's honestly kind of a pain in the ass process. So it takes like, it took me like 30 minutes. Was it worth it in the end? Oh yeah, uh, definitely. But it did take a really long time for me to get used to because I played for like a year and a half before I remapped. Alright, the other thing is the white line that goes from your weapon to your crosshairs also represents the maximum range of your weapon. So if you aim really far away, you'll see that the line starts to kind of fade out. So if you are flying past the end of the white line or in the faded out portion, you're going to do little or no damage at all to the enemy. 
Even if you hit him? Even if you hit him. Damn. Okay. Uh, yeah, that little bit of knowledge can help you a lot. I held a bridge completely by myself for three hours because I just knew the range of my weapon and the enemy did it. I have a question. Um, if you were prone and I wanted to shoot at you and I were not prone, how do I do that? Will aiming at you suffice uh, or do I need to also go prone? Uh, the aiming actually kind of depends on how far away you are from me. So if you're really far away, I find it's best to aim very slightly behind them. Uh, when you're about medium range, you aim right at them, and at closer range, you aim right in front of them. Wait, say that one more time, just slowly, I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, so if somebody's laying prone, if you're at long range to them and you're trying to shoot them, the best point to aim is very slightly behind them. Like, like Tizzy here, aim behind him, like by his feet. Yeah, so you could aim like right about there, right at my feet. Uh, if you're at medium range, then you're gonna aim directly on my body. And if you're close range, it's actually helpful to aim very slightly in front of me, like right in front of my head. And what I mean by medium, short, long range is actually these lines that you see. So if you stand on this white line, short range is about to that number two line. Uh, medium range goes pretty much from the number two line, just short of the number three line, and anything at three or farther is long range. I also noticed that the sniper rifle takes a bunch of time to get down to a small point. Yes, it does. There's several weapons that, are act, that, that act that way. And the sniper rifle can fire beyond the third line. Like, it can fire all the way to the rocks I'm looking at. Oh my yeah, God. It, has a, it has an extreme range. Uh, the warded sniper rifle is even longer range. Oh, God. Alright, so, uh, we were talking about laying prone. A really important thing about laying prone is you almost never want to actually do so in combat. Uh, laying prone leaves you extremely vulnerable. You're a very easy target when you're laying down. And it's extremely difficult for you to shoot a target that's moving, especially if they're moving from side to side, unless they're at long, uh, unless they're at long range. Gotcha. Okay, interesting. Uh, you can get weapons locked for a while, or you can get totally banned if you do it too much. So it's uh, easier for me to demonstrate to you the laying prone problems. Uh, so just like one single person, let me pick somebody, uh, so Trout, uh, just kind of come over here and lay prone and face me. I think you say him here. Oh, okay, uh, just anybody, I don't know. I got you. But we, uh, if there's too many blue people bunched up, this isn't going to work. So, uh, everybody else kind of give them a little room. Alright, so World War II guy just face me. Oh god, this takes forever. Yes, it does, and that is the big problem. So I'm going to go way the hell over here. I'm going to go so far away that you're going to have to use the corner of your screen to see me. And then when I say go, I'm going to come running at you, and I just want you to try to shoot me before I get to you. Ready? And go. <laughs> oh my god! Absolutely. You're dead right there. The other problem with laying down is if somebody throws a grenade at you without cooking it, you usually have a couple of seconds to run away from it. But it takes two and a half seconds to stand up. So you're pretty much fucked. Oof! <laughs> Alright, so let's kind of go over the basic weapons. Uh, I'm going to just skip pistols. They're, they are not that different from each other. Pistols actually are good weapons, so don't discount them. And pistols is the only thing you get to start the game with for free. Every time you respawn, you start with one pistol, one hammer, and two magazines for your pistol. Uh, so they're definitely a useful weapon. Sometimes I go into combat with nothing but a pistol. The shotgun, which is on the second table here, is an absolute piece of garbage. Uh, they are totally worthless. You can punch somebody to death faster than you're going to kill them with a shotgun. Yeah, I noticed that. That's disappointing. Yeah. Uh, they used to be extremely OP. They nerfed the living shit out. Alright, this here is the Argentini rifle. 
it is actually one of our best all-around weapons. Uh, it does not require any research for us to use them, so we get them at the very beginning of the war. They're long range. They're fairly accurate. They do a fair amount of damage. Uh, they have Stop. a good-sized magazine. They have a good rate of fire, and they're lightweight. So pretty much everything you want in a weapon. Uh, they are especially good at daytime combat. They're not quite as good for nighttime combat, but they're still okay for it. And the other big advantage of the Argentini is that it can use a bayonet. So there are bayonets in this box right here. That's the box. So everybody grab an Argentini. Uh, you can also use the Fushina with the bayonet, which is over here. And once you have your gear, just come over here by me, and then we'll uh, go over how to use it. All right, let's take a swig of beer. Oh, yeah, F. Uh, it's F. Yeah, Fox Roll, Foxhole runs on beer and fig news. That, that sounds like an amazing combination. Alcohol and firearms are my favorite. <laughs> you must be from the south. Yes. How did you know? <laughs> uh just a wild guess. Shit. <laughs> right, anyway, I'm from, I'm from Texas. I learned how to shoot when I was four. Nice. All right. So for those of you who got your gear to attach your bayonet to the weapon, just press F. So fix bayonets, and then to kill somebody, just left click. Do not right click. Wah. No, you're right clicking, uh, just left click. There Got you. it. The oh, bayonet, that's so weird. The bayonet is the most powerful close combat weapon in this game. Oh, it you will can kill. Run too. Yes, it will kill anybody that it even barely touches. And you can use it while you're moving, so you can kill multiple people with one swing of the bayonet, uh, both friends and enemies. Uh, you're going to see the veterans tend to do these circles and figure eights with them, like this. That will kill every single person around me. Uh, the other thing you can do with the bayonet is it has kind of an alternate mode. So normally when you left click it, it just uh, goes directly in front of you. And it will follow your WASD directions. But if you hold down your left mouse button, the bayonet will follow your mouse cursor. So this allows you to do advanced maneuvers such as running backwards while you're stabbing the shit out of somebody. Wait, how do you how do you stab versus shoot? Just left click. Do not right click. And and wait, say that one more time. Do with the the move the it follows your mouse cursor instead. It will follow your mouse cursor if you hold your left mouse button down. If you just click real quick, it will just follow your movement. So by using your mouse cursor, you can do things like running sideways and doing a sweep. Or running backwards, or figure eights, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's really good for when you're like fighting near buildings to stab somebody around the corner. Kind of run as, towards the as, corner, as, then left click around it like that. So as you press, as you press move, I got it. There you go. Yeah, so you got it. You, so you're constantly stabbing. It's not like one stab, two stab, three stab. It's just a constant stab, right? Yeah, as long as the uh, bayonet's actually extended, you are killing anybody it gets even close to. Shit, man. You can absolutely clear out a huge batch of people, like as crowded as you I could probably kill all of you in about three seconds. Now, I've got it. It shows up in my inventory and my player equipped, but it, it doesn't have it affixed. Is there a button you gotta press? Ah, uh, okay, I rebound that. Oh, it does okay. have it yeah, equipped to affect your accuracy? It will be. Accuracy? No, it does not affect your accuracy. Uh, you need to use your toggle mode button, Teletubby. So always use this, no matter what you're doing. Got it. Well, there are times when it's not as useful. If you're in fighting in long-range combat, you're just not going to be able to get up to the enemy. But if you're in a city, or like trench warfare, or nighttime, these things absolutely rock. Uh, can the submachine guns get them? Or no, I assume not. Nope. Uh, only the, uh, on our team, only the Argentini and the Fushina can use it. Uh, on the Warden team, uh, it's their Lovecaster and, uh, what did they rename them? 
Oh, uh, the Blake Road. So how are the submachine guns? Alright, so the next weapon is in fact a submachine gun. This is the pitch gun. Alright, so the sub, uh, the pitch gun is uh, actually not that great a weapon for the most part. Uh, because it is short range, it's not very accurate, it is fully automatic. Uh, it also doesn't do a whole lot of damage, and it has a small magazine to blow through ammo really fast with this sucker. But, it does have one advantage, uh, which is that it goes into your pistol slot instead of your rifle slot. Ooh. So, because of that, people that play things like Medic or uh, Tank Commanders, a lot of them do prefer the pitch gun just because they're kind of restricted to pistols. Especially Tank Commanders. Uh, but even then, they're not really trying to kill the enemy with these things, because they really can't do it. Uh, they're using it to kind of make the enemy keep their distance and to slow them down. That's a shame. I love uh, the grease gun, and this doesn't seem like it at all. Uh, we've got a new gun that's... Uh, for some... all right, when we so reload, this... does it drop the entire magazine, or do we have... Uh, or is it video yes, game logic you... reloading? Uh, uh, you lose the ammo in your magazine when you what? So use all the ammunition in your gun and then reload. Got it. Yeah, unless you're like uh, in a quiet spot and you're down to two bullets and you know you're about to go attack, then go, go ahead and reload. Alright, so this weapon here is called the Fushina. Uh, the Fushina is very similar to the Argentini. The differences are that it fires a three round burst and it's somewhat less accurate. So because it fires a three-round burst, it goes through its ammunition quite a bit faster, so you usually need to take an extra mag. And because it's less accurate, it also has a shorter effective range. So typically, the Argentini is pretty much a long-range weapon. You can hit from this line to that number three line fairly easily. Uh, but with the Fushina, you're not really going to want to try and fire anything past about that number two line. So this oh. means the Fushina is not a good long-range or daytime weapon. It's really for short-range combat such as cities, trenches, and nighttime. So it's basically an STG-44 or a bar. Got it. Uh, no, it's not actually that good. It's more like a uh, SKS. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. I got excited. Uh, uh, we have something actually exactly like the bar, and the enemy has one just like this. Oh, oh joy. Uh, and that's actually where I'm getting to next, which is, uh, the other problem with the Fushina is as soon as we actually research our good SMGs, the Fushina pretty much becomes obsolete. So, uh, the good SMGs that we have are not included here in the tutorial, they're brand new weapons. Oh, uh, we, have, uh, we have one called the Lion's Claw, which is pretty much a bar. Uh, so it is very effective up to mid ranges, so a little bit past that number two range. It does a lot of damage. But it's an exceptionally good nighttime and close range combat weapon. Uh, we also have a new weapon called the Dust, which technically is classified as an assault rifle, but really it's more like a SMG with just a very large magazine. It's uh, similar to a PPSH 41, really. So it has a 40 round mag. Uh, it is. Very accurate, but it's also slow to fire. So, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not slow to fire, it's slow to aim. So this means that uh, if you're firing past medium ranges, you have to aim quite a bit longer to be able to hit your target. But up to medium ranges is exceptionally good just because of the sheer volume of fire. And it's one of our best all around weapons. Alright, now over here we have two machine guns, which uh, obviously <laughs> so there was a recent change that the light machine gun now uses heavy machine gun ammunition. So if you're trying to fire the light machine gun and it wasn't working, that's the reason why. Yeah, it fires 2.7 keys. Yes. That, uh, so that's, I don't think that's very light. Jesus Christ. That's, that's a very large light machine gun. But indeed. So the light machine gun and heavy machine gun are fairly similar to each other. They do the same amount of damage is a lot. In fact, they can even destroy light structures uh, such as tier 1 bunkers and boxes. Uh, they're both very Does accurate. Does this they're thing both... have more ammo than advertised? Yes. So 
So that thing basically can fire forever. The light machine gun does not, though. So that's one of the big differences between them. Uh, but as you can see, they're both very accurate. They're both very long range. They do lots of damage. Uh, the heavy machine gun is even more accurate when it's uh, uh, directly touching the surface. So because of this, whenever you're using a weapon similar to the heavy machine gun, uh, such as a mortar or an RPG, you always want to move with your pistol out. And then just get into place, aim, and then deploy your weapon. And it's also a good idea to conceal the type of weapon you're using whenever you have something like a heavy machine gun, uh, because you become a prime target. Depression is really important with machine guns. Shout, die, motherfucker, die. Watch. It is good for stuff like that, but the truth is the Dusk and the Lion Claw are better. Uh, since they changed the light machine gun ammo, it's not as useful as it used to be. Uh, we mostly use it to destroy foxholes and things like that now. Alright, so the last weapon is the sniper rifle over here. Uh, the sniper rifle is kind of an unusual weapon. It is very long range, it does a lot of damage, and it's very, very accurate. But it is extremely slow to aim. It takes forever for the crosshairs to shrink. Uh, so you have to be very patient to use a sniper rifle. And honestly, it's really only good for choke point battles. Uh, things like defending bridges, narrow valleys, and stuff like that. And that's because you have to pre-aim the weapon. So, you're basic, uh, so with choke points, you're going to know where the enemy is moving. So you kind of pre-aim into the zone where you are waiting for the enemy until you get that maximum accuracy. And then when they actually arrive, then just slowly move your target over the enemy. Wait another second or two because you're going to have to get your accuracy back again. And then fire. Yeah. So it does take... Uh, it's hard to shoot anybody in a trench with any weapon, to be honest with you, except grenades. And I'll go over the reasons behind that in a little while. Alright, so uh, the downside of the sniper rifle is our sniper rifle is considered to be seriously inferior to the Warden sniper rifle. Uh, their version will pretty much always do a one-shot kill. Uh, with ours, it almost always requires two shots, except for maybe about 10 to 15% of the time. Wow, that's bullshit, but okay. Yeah, that's how it goes. Do headshots uh, and stuff count? No, they don't. And I'll go over that a little bit while, a little while too. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, what this kind of leads into is the fact that we have completely different weapons than the Warden weapons do. So, in general, if you compare our weapons uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, their weapons are usually a little bit longer range than ours, and they do a little bit more damage than ours. Our weapons tend to be lighter weight, and they have a higher rate of fire. So, warded weapons favor offensive, long-range combat. Our weapons favor mobile, mid- to short-range combat. So, we chose the right team. Yeah, it depends on your playing style, but yeah, I would agree you did. We raw charges? Right. Yes. What's that? We raw charges. Oh yeah, we do those. Uh, I actually prefer the Ura version of the people do bonsai. Bonsai. Uh, uh, I'm semi-Russian at heart. <laughs> Alright, so that's the end of the basic weapons lecture. Does anybody have any questions before we move on? Uh, so, a quick point, or I guess kind of a question. I just want to hear your thoughts on it. I've, I've actually followed people through the basic training thing a couple of times just to see what like veterans have to say about weapons and 
on that and such. One sure. of them mentioned that, uh, you can, that since we're all right-handed, you can actually, like, you can kind yes. of aim... At that is absolutely true. Uh, uh, that is correct. I usually actually teach that a little further in the tutorial. But what he's mentioning is there's some things you can take cover behind, such as a tree, uh, or where I usually mention that there's a door frame that you can hide behind. Uh, just keep in mind that your player is right-handed, so you want cover to be on the left side of your body. This allows you to shoot around the cover. Also, there's another little trick you can do when you're directly in cover. Uh, drop my rifle. The truth is, there's a, there's a ton of stuff that I don't teach new guys just because there's too much information. You know, there's no right. way for me to jam 1,200 hours worth of experience into a 40-minute session. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Major. I got a brand new batch. Oh, you're fine. Hey, get up on the left side to all the issued standard issue weapons. Pick up a weapon. Pick up some ammo right next to it by pushing E. Sh hold Shift and E. I select boxes. And ask me questions, there's a shit ton of fucking questions you can ask me, but I'm not going to tell you about your weapon, it's going to take too long. Don't run off, complete basic training, I will promote your privates. Alright, uh, my guy is going to follow me this way. Get on the line, and start shooting. It's like ducklings. Oh yeah, uh, this is one of the large, well, it's, uh, the largest class I've taught was about 30 people. Alright, so this Do is they usually have to, like, what just happened? Oh, sorry. What's that? I was just... I, I just sort of like ended up in this because I had just loaded up. Oh, yeah. Is this like normal? Yeah, that happens a lot. I often start with one or two people and end up with about 20. <laughs> Alright, so on these white tables we have our anti-tank weapons. Uh, the This box over here contains our light RPG, which is called the Venom. Uh, and this box over here is the heavy RPG. Both of these use the exact same ammunition as each other, which is in the box that's in between them here. So because they use the same ammunition, that means they do the same amount of damage as each other. Uh, the difference between them is that the Bane has a much longer range than the Venom, but, uh, like 13 to 15 meters farther. Uh, also, the Bane, you have to be crouched or laying prone in order to fire it. That's the heavy, right? That's correct. The now the third type of RPG, which is in this box over here, you want to put your enemy in. is called the Ignifist. Uh, it's similar to a Panzerfaust, so it basically does not require any ammunition, it's just a one-shot weapon. Uh, it's relatively lightweight, and it goes into your grenade slot instead of your rifle slot. Uh, so that means you can carry a primary weapon and switch to it whenever you're ready for it. Uh, but it does have a couple of downsides, which is that it does less damage than the other two, and it's fairly short range. Uh, they did give it a small buff during the update that's coming at the beginning of this next war, uh, which is making it lighter weight and cheaper to produce, so hopefully it'll make it a little bit more useful weapon. For the Venom, that was? Uh, for the Ignifus. Ah, okay. Alright, so with all RPGs, they are affected by gravity. When you aim it, you're going to notice that the white line kind of curves down towards the ground. Uh, this has two major effects. First, it's relatively easy to accidentally kill yourself with an RPG. Uh, people do it all the freaking time. Except for the loss. And... Uh, yeah. So what will happen is you'll be crouched down and there'll be something in front of you like this sandbag wall or the edge of a uh, shell hole. A target that's really far away and slightly down slope, it'll clip the sandbag wall and it'll blow up in your face. No. Can... Like that right there. <laughs> so you gotta get right up to it? Uh, yeah, it's best to be right next to the sandbag wall or to be standing. 
Like, if you're inside of a shell hole, it's really, really hard to shoot out of it if you're crouched. And it's almost impossible to do so inside of a trench. Sometimes it's hard to shoot out of a trench when you're standing. All right, so the other thing with gravity is you can use it to your advantage. Uh, if you aim upwards a little bit, it can increase the range of your RPG. You do this by aiming at the top of obstacles. So if I crouch here and aim at the top of that hay bale in front of me, it'll arc upwards a little bit and it adds about 5 to 10 meters to the range of the RPG. Now, that's... Sorry to interrupt, but uh, you can do, that's just a throwaway weapon, right? Yeah, the Ignifus is. Uh, the Bane is absolutely not a throwaway weapon. Those things are really, really expensive. So always try to recover them and get them back to base. If you find one laying around, or if you blow away all your ammo, get it back to base. Don't just drop it. I got a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. When shooting just a normal gun, sh when I'm trying to like shoot a guy, should I aim directly at his body, or should I aim past him like so that red thing appears? So uh, I normally cover this later when we talk about cover, but basically anytime you have your crosshairs directly over the enemy, it always aims at their chest. It's kind of like auto-aim. Uh, it is not possible oh, to aim at their head or anything like that. Alright. So, so, what is, All right. what so the next weapon, the next weapon which is on the brown table over here is called the Infantry Support Gun. Uh, we also call them an ISG or a 30mm. So first off, to Ooh. use one, you have to have a tripod, which is located in the box on the right. Over there. So to use the tripod, just come up to the firing line and then press B to deploy it. That's B as in boy. While you're deploying it, you can rotate the uh, icon so that you can aim the tripod. Uh, you do this by holding down your right mouse button and just moving your mouse. So aiming the tripod will aim the weapon that attaches to it. Now the weapon is actually over here. And to use that, just walk up to the tripod and press B again and click on the tripod. Uh, you will have to be standing directly next to the tripod for this to work. So you, you click on the tripod? Yes, after you press B. B or V? B, boy. Got it. Oh, that's awesome. Explosive strings over here. And now, how do you use it? Is it E or? It is Q, uh, and it has a you press the key bind. Yeah, I agree. Well, if you press E, it strings. actually disassembles the weapon. Oh, shit. So, and you're going, right. you are going to disassemble one of these by accident right in the middle of combat. Trust me. Everybody does. Wait, what was that again? Is it? You gotta crouch behind it and press Q. Uh, the ammunition for it is over here in the center box. Listen to the Major, he's uh, he's basically gonna go through everything I'm gonna go through. I don't need to talk right. after him. Uh, you basically just missed the RPGs, but yeah, I'm covering ISG right now, and then I'll go over grenades. Yep. Alright, and then just crouch behind it and press Q, then load and fire. And you take 30 mils, right? That's correct. So this weapon is designed to destroy structures, things like buildings, bunkers, and foxholes. Uh, it's actually one of our most powerful weapons. It does a huge amount of damage to structures. You can tear through an entire bunker system with this really fast. It's also long range. Uh, it's longer range than most tanks. They're extremely cheap for us to build. And they're relatively lightweight. So it's got a lot of advantages. Uh, the biggest advantage is that the Wardens can't make them. Uh, and they get real damn salty about that. Oh shit! <laughs> Wait, what did they get salty about? Uh, the fact that we have these guns and they don't. <laughs> Wait, so they, the something equivalent? they don't have these? They nope. have equivalents to them, but uh, these are better than their equivalents. So, uh, because that, if your position is better? getting overrun, if your position is getting overrun, make sure you take the weapon with you. It's okay to leave behind the tripod and even the ammo, but always take the weapon. Uh, that's because the Wardens can produce tripods and they can produce 30mm ammo but not the weapon itself. So we don't want those to get captured. Uh, I think it's better than their equivalents. Hey, uh, they're training? longer range. Yeah, they're longer range and they do more damage, basically. Oh, cool. Uh, these things can actually kill tanks, but it's not easy with that. It takes like five Roger. or six of them working together. And of course, everything kills infantry if you manage to shoot them. 
So when you're using an infantry support gun, you want to be working in a team. Uh, one person should carry the weapon, another person carrying the tripod, have at least a couple other people just there to protect you with rifles and whatnot, and you definitely want a medic. Uh, you're a very high priority target when you use one of these weapons. And of course, everybody should carry as much ammo for the weapon as they can. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about grenades. On this round table here, we have two different types of grenades. Uh, the box on the left contains the Bomba Stone Grenade, which is designed to kill infantry. Uh, the box on the right contains the Mammon Grenade, which is designed to destroy structures. Uh, you're going to hear most people call the Mammon Grenade an HE Grenade. So the HE Grenade explodes on impact as soon as it contacts its target. Almost every other grenade in the game explodes after a 5 second timer. So this means that if you throw a Bomba Stone Grenade without cooking it, the enemy will have several seconds to run away. Now, how but do you, you can, can you, you can throw it? Throw back? No, no, you cannot throw back. So to cook a grenade, all you have to do is hold down your middle mouse, or I'm sorry, hold down your left mouse button for just a second or two longer than normal. Uh, as soon as you push down the mouse button, it starts the timer, and then it throws when you release. Uh, but there is friendly fire, so if you hold it too long, it's going to explode in your hand, and it's going to kill you and everybody nearby. Hey uh, guys, how, don't do you, how do you get the grenade out? Hey, don't run uh, off, you privates over there. Stay with us. Uh, press 3 to get the grenade out. Alright, the other thing with cooking a grenade is that if you are crouched and start to cook a grenade, you cannot stand back up until after you throw the grenade. To be sure that if you are crouched behind an obstacle, that you are capable of throwing the grenade past that obstacle. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, it's going to bounce back in your face and you're going to have a sad day. I've died that way. I've died away that way more times than I can count because somebody was crouched inside of a trench next to me and tried to toss a grenade. Sorry, what was that mounted weapon that uh, the wardens didn't have? The 30 millimeter? It's the infantry support gun. So what you see. Ah. And they don't have that? That's the important one? That's correct. They don't have that, and of course they have weapons that we don't have as well. Basically, we have completely different gear than the Wardens. That includes our vehicles, tanks, artillery, everything. Awesome. Alright, so uh, anytime you throw a grenade, the game will automatically load another grenade of the same type into your hand from your backpack. So this allows you to keep throwing grenade after grenade. Uh, there are five other types of grenades in the game that are not included here in the tutorial. Uh, first, the Wardens do not get the Bomba Stone Grenade. They have their own anti-infantry grenade, which is called the Frag Grenade. Uh, it's a little bit shorter range, and it has a smaller explosion radius. But it does a lot more damage inside of that explosion radius. It pretty much will always kill you. Uh, with Don't the Bomba Stone They also get their own uh, anti-tank grenade. That's correct. Uh, so with the Bomba Stone, it is possible to survive the explosion, but it will 100% of the time cause you to bleed. Uh, I'll discuss bleeding when we get to the next section. Alright, uh, there's also a smoke grenade, but unfortunately it is currently disabled due to a bug. But smoke grenades just create a big white cloud, and if you're standing inside of it, or it's between you and the enemy, it makes you invisible to that enemy. Additionally, smoke grenades will protect you from AI defenses. And what I mean by that, there are certain structures in this game, such as foxholes, that if you get too close to an enemy foxhole, the foxhole itself will shoot at you, even if there's no players inside of it. Alright, there are two types of anti-tank grenades. Uh, both factions share one, which is called the Sticky Grenade. It's very short range. It sticks to its targets, it does a lot of damage to vehicles, and it has an increased chance of damaging the tracks on vehicles. It also sticks to infantry if you can hit somebody with it, which can be hilarious. Uh, the enemy has an anti-tank grenade called the White Ash Flask. Uh, it does about the same amount of damage as a sticky bomb, and it also has the increased chance of uh, tracking it. But it's about double the range, it's about the same range as an HE grenade. And it also explodes on impact instead of having a timer. Ooh, that sounds dangerous. Uh, yeah, uh, they also, I think they do a little bit less damage than the sticky bomb. I'm not so certain about that, though. But either way, they can be kind of scary because of, 
uh, vehicle tracking. Uh, tracked vehicle is pretty much just a sitting duck. Alright, uh, finally there are the poison gas grenades, which are called Green Ash. This is one of the deadliest weapons in the game. Uh, they create a huge uh, green cloud of gas, and it will kill you within a couple of seconds. Uh, if you do survive and get out of the cloud, you'll almost always be bleeding. And uh, the poison gas ignores defenses. So normally if you're inside of a foxhole or inside of a tank or something, the only way to kill you is to actually blow up the foxhole or destroy the tank. But that is not true with poison gas. It will kill you no matter where you're located. Uh, the only way to protect yourself is to wear a gas mask with gas filters. Uh, so a gas filter acts kind of like ammunition for a gas mask. Uh, one single gas filter will protect you from one full gas grenade, plus a little bit of the next one. Uh, so it's especially important if you are ever the crew of a tank that you wear a gas mask with multiple gas filters. At least four or five. Uh, really, as new players, you want as many gas filters as you can carry. And that's because if the enemy kills the crew of the tank, they can steal the tank. And also, please lock your tanks. Alright, that is the end of the explosives lecture. Does anybody have any questions? How do I lock my tanks, senpai? Uh, one at a time. So somebody asked how to throw a grenade. Wait, wait uh, here, just left-click it so it's in the equipment slots, then press 3, and then uh, right-click to aim, left-click to throw. How do you bring right, the inventory? I'm sorry. Oh, that's alright. Press tab. How do I lock my vehicle? You must complete this training with us to get your promotions. I didn't hear that last question. What was it? How do I lock my vehicle? Uh, you can press L uh, when you're either inside it or standing directly next to it. Uh, there's actually two different types of locks. You have the basic lock, which is pressing L, and that prevents anybody else from using it. Uh, if you belong to a squad, you can do what's called squad locking. And what that will do is it prevents other people from withdrawing things from the vehicle inventory. And uh, if you lock it to yourself, your squad mates can also use that vehicle. And doing that's a little more complicated. You basically have to open up the vehicle menu and press a button. Alrighty. Uh, any, any other questions? Yeah, um, gas mask. Is that a something like a bayonet where you would have to equip it with a button, or if you have that in, in your inventory, does it automatically equip? Uh, you basically left-click it in your inventory, and it will put it into the equipment slots. And as long as you had a gas filter in your inventory at the same time, it will also automatically equip the filter. But if, your filter if your filter gets used up, it will automatically equip another one. Weight. What is a good weight to aim for? Because you know, you say weight is our advantage on the colonial side. Like, I'm mine's at 50. Yeah. I have two grenades, like three grenades, a pistol, a rifle, a bayonet, four ammo, and then a hammer and two, two nine mil. Oh nine. god, that you have about three times as much gear as I usually carry. <laughs> Got it. Uh, the, I can give you an actual percentage, except for definitely less than 50 percent. Uh, I Got personally it. go very minimal. I if I'm using a rifle. I will drop my pistol, all the ammo for it, my hammer. I'll just pick up a rifle and maybe two magazines. Uh, more frequently, I just take one magazine, load it, and go with that. Again, uh, you will find ammo in the field when you get to the front lines. Got Definitely. it. Again. Especially if it's a really busy front line. But generally, the lighter you move, the better off you are. Uh, you're going to see veterans when they fight. So like new players fighting tend to just kind of crouch behind cover and plink away at the enemy. And if you're at long range, you're going to get screwed, because the enemy has longer range weapons than you do. Veteran players tend to move while they fire, so it's, it looks more like... Cool, okay. That kind of stuff. And that's the type of fighting that favors Colonials. Now, uh, more realistically, we tend to move from cover to cover, so if there's cover available, we still use it, but we don't sit in one spot forever. Definitely you don't want to get too bunched up with a bunch of other people or you're just inviting a grenade. Okay, everybody. Everybody press the 9 key right now. <laughs> Time to dance. <laughs>
You are all my prisoners. All right, I'm gonna put your butts to work. All right. Uh, any other questions before we move on? Is there POWs? Not yes. really, but sometimes we role play it. Sweet. You you, you can grab it down and we play and bring it back to the line. He can't give up. If oh yeah, that's shot. true. Uh, if you do grab a down player, don't take him into our base, or you're going to give away intelligence about our defenses. Right. Yeah, it, it, it's I'm, I have right. Do streamers break that anyway? No, streamers are supposed uh, to lock the maps before they play the game, but some people don't. Yeah, some people don't. Actually, probably the biggest Kali screen, uh, streamer doesn't bother to anymore. He said that the, the truth is, if you're streaming, you're going to be giving away intelligence no matter what you do, and I kind of agree with them. Because just I listening agree, to people man. talk, yeah, just listening to people talk on his stream will give away info and things like What's... whenever they open up a base and stuff like that. A secure button do. That's all. Uh, yeah, it's specifically for streaming. It allows you to look at the map without giving away where our defenses are. So what you're saying is we should be hanging all streamers with treason. Yeah, like nah. copy. No! Honestly, there is a little bit of, there is a little bit of sc uh, stream sniping, but it's not that bad. You can set a time delay, too, so if it's, like, if it's bad, yeah. or you see you have more viewers than normal, you can just, you can set, like, a 30-second delay, and it's... Yeah, but for the real intelligence that they're looking for, the time delay is not going to matter. Things like how many shirts are in our base. So if yeah. that streamer goes over there and uh, opens up the base menu, the enemy can see, oh, they're down to 20 shirts. These guys got screwed. <laughs> that delay won't really make a difference. All right, uh, any other questions before we move on? What's left on the uh, basic training agenda? We got like uh, half there's, there. Well, it's actually a little less than half. We got the medical station. I'm going to talk a little bit about buildings and then concealment and then swimming, and then that's it. Can the enemies hear us in local chat? Not anymore. Uh, Sadly. Really? They can read local text. Uh, that's lame. Uh, there's, uh, they had to get rid of it because there's so many players now that it overwhelmed the voice server. That's some BS. <laughs> uh, this game used to have like just about five to six hundred people playing at any one time. Now it's uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand. Are you uh, sticking around Good. doing advanced training after this? Uh, maybe. Uh, it's it's hard to say right now. There's so many new players. <laughs> so... Right? The war the war just ended. Not the fresh kids. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. We go to war tomorrow, boys. Hey, everyone signed All up right, for the war today. Before. Why don't we go ahead and move on to the next section? There's a little right. shortcut you can take this way. Wait for everybody else. this way, it's faster. Else. So run between these two tables, jump over the sandbags, and meet me. Well, you can crouch. You doing? The cooler way is this way. You can crouch. I'll shoot at. How do I like add you or whatever, Mister? Uh... Any way to do it? You can add me on Steam or in Discord if you. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, everybody, just come this way. Try not to walk through the barbed wire. That's the barbed wire. I did it on purpose. Yeah, Maybe somebody always does. Yeah, I try to. I should set up my Discord. Only really slow. When there's when there's a group this big, it's hard to kind of keep up with everybody. Wait, does barbed wire damage or does it only slow? It only slows you. All right, let's wait for these other guys to get up here. I'm gonna take another swig of beer, and I've got the hiccups again. <laughs> Your sounds nice. Uh, for the purposes of Twitch, apparently I'm not allowed to drink alcohol, so this is uh, sparkling uh, water. Medical stuff. Yeah. Bones work, healing, and all that kind of good stuff. So first off... Anytime you get shot, you're going to lose some hit points. There is not a hit point bar, hit point meter, or anything like that. There is no way to ever tell exactly how many hit points you have. Instead, your uniform will just start getting covered with more and more blood as you take damage. Also, anytime you get shot, there's a chance that you'll become staggered. 
And what this does, it makes you move slower than normal. Uh, so instead of moving at this speed, you're going to move more about like this speed here. It lasts uh, somewhere like around 5 to 10 seconds. Nothing will ever make it stop. It sucks a lot. Uh, if you're lucky, you'll be able to just duck behind a wall or something and wait it out. If you're unlucky, you're probably dead, but try to just walk away from the enemy in a zigzag. Uh, that'll increase your chance of survival. Alright, then last, anytime you get shot, there is a chance that you will start bleeding. Bleeding just drains away your hit points. Uh, the more you move around, the faster you're going to bleed. If you start running, you're going to bleed out relatively quickly. Bleeding never stops by itself. You have to get medical attention for bleeding to stop. It is very deadly. Alright, so once you get down to one hit point, your character is going to collapse on the ground and become unconscious. This starts a 30 second timer, and at the end of that timer you die. While you're unconscious, you cannot move, you cannot shoot, or anything like that, but you can still communicate with your team to call for a medic. Uh, there are two different things you can do for an unconscious player. First, you could pick them up and carry them by standing next to them, and... Well, the button used to be E, but they just made a change at the beginning of this person now. I don't know if it's going to be E or V, as in Victor. Uh, since bodies are kind of considered a large item, so it might be that new button, the V. <laughs> so you're going to have to experiment a little bit. <laughs> uh, either way, once you pick somebody up, it throws them on your shoulder, so you can take them to a safe location for a medic to help them. And while you're carrying them, it pauses their countdown timer. So they will stay alive for as long as you're willing to carry them. But for the medic to help them, you do have to toss them back on the ground, and their timer will resume as soon as they hit the ground. Uh, so if they have less than three seconds, then they're pretty much just dead. Nobody's going to be able to help them. And that is because the other thing you could do with an unconscious player is you can use a trauma kit, which is in this box over here, to revive them back to consciousness. Now to use a trauma kit, you have to have blood plasma bottles in your inventory. That's in this box here on the left. So blood plasma bottles act like ammunition for the trauma kits. It takes one full blood plasma bottle to revive somebody back to consciousness. And all you do is just take the, co the trauma kit, put it in your rifle slot, and just left click on the victim. And after about three seconds, they're going to stand up and they're going to be able to move again. But they will still be at one hit point. Trauma kits do not heal you, they only revive you back to consciousness. So to heal somebody, you have to use a first aid kit, which is in the far box over here. To use a first aid kit, you have to have bandages in your inventory. Those are in the second box that's directly behind the side. Over there. Alright, so once again, bandages act kind of like uh, ammunition for the first aid kit. So one bandage gives a first aid kit 10 charges. And all you do is just walk up to somebody with the first aid kit and hold down your left mouse button on them. And this will slowly use those charges up and start healing them. Uh, to heal somebody all the way from one hit point all the way back up to full requires seven charges of the first aid kit. Jesus. It used so to be do cool. squads usually have like so, like half of the people running trauma kits and the other ones running med kits? Or do you just brag uh, as you need it? Depends uh, on how organized they are. <laughs> I can uh, tell you right now, no. <laughs> uh, in, my experience, the, in my experience, there's usually either no medics at all or a hundred of them running around. It's almost never any in between. Well, you're, I'm you're a, looking at one of the only support mains in the world, so there you go. <laughs> I'm a support main, hey! So, my what man. was your question? Actually, let me kind of um, wrap up. Let me kind of wrap this up real quick and I'll pause for questions, okay? All right, so where was I? Uh, oh, yeah. So also with a uh, first aid kit, uh, anytime you left click somebody, it will instantly stop them from bleeding. So because of this, a lot of times if you're playing medic, you're going to have two or three people standing around you who are all bleeding. So you want to make sure you left click each of them one time real quickly, then go back and heal. Them. Does that use up one of the charges? I'm pretty sure it yes. does, but I'm not 100%. Okay. Yeah, I uh, believe the guy with the word medic in his name. <laughs> And then you can also use a bandage on yourself. Uh, if you do so, it will stop you from bleeding, but it does not heal you. To use a bandage on yourself, all you have to do is put it in your grenade slot, press 3 so that it's in your hand, and then left click. This will consume the entire bandage, 
so it is a little bit less efficient than having a medic actually tap you with the med kit. Sorry, can you repeat that one more time? All right, so to, uh, you can use a bandage on yourself by putting it in your grenade slot, press 3, then left click. This will stop you from bleeding. It does not heal you. The only way for you to ever get healed is for a teammate to heal you with a first aid kit. All right. So, but, but still, they are bandages are dirt cheap, and they don't weigh anything. So we always recommend that you take one or two bandages with you into combat, uh, even if you're not a medic. Uh, anything more than two is kind of a waste, just because you're not going to survive that long. It weighs one percent, guys. One percent. There you go. One percent. You can yeah, you can have it. It's super easy. Definitely. Um. Uh, all right. All right so uh, what I was your question, medic? I, I don't have a question, but let him tell him about critical wounded. Yeah, I'm about to get to that. All right. So, what was your question? World War Two. Okay, so just to just to go over this one second, one more time. Sorry. Uh, so the plas the plasma the plasma uh, gets people on out from un unconscious, right? Then you right. need bandage. Uh, sorry, you need the bandages to get them back to full health. But to do that, you need first aid kits. Right. So it's the trauma kit that revives them. Blood plasma acts like ammunition for the trauma kit. Yep. First first aid kits heal. Bandages act like ammunition for the first aid kit. So the first aid kit and the trauma kit are reusable. The rest of them get consumed. Got it. Okay. Is there any way to recharge the first aid kit, or is it it just it? Yeah, if you just band. have more bandages in your inventory, it will automatically recharge itself. Ah. I do. Uh, uh, I do recommend if you're on the front line and you see bandages, if it's a good front line and it's well maintained, you'll have an ambulance nearby. And it will have bandages in it if it's well maintained too. So just be aware of that. Of course, it'll probably be locked if the medic has any sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm standing next to it usually, but it yeah, should yeah. be locked. And if you are running around the battlefield and you start finding lots of bandages on dead bodies, turn over your extra bandages to the medics. They need them more than you. And plasma. And plasma. Because so you can only the... carry one plasma jaw. What's well, the thing you, sh uh, you should grab if, if you don't have any, like if you're looking for stuff to loot, grab first aid kits, grab bags, grab plasma? Uh, I go for the most valuable? expensive, I tend to go for the more expensive, valuable things first, stuff that's rare like binoculars, radios, uh, weapons, ammunition. Actually, I prioritize ammo over weapons. Huh. Uh, and medical gear, especially bandages because those stack. Blood plasma bottles do not stack in your inventory, so you can only carry a couple. Uh, it, it just kind of takes some time uh, to learn how to what to prioritize with that stuff. Uh, but never bother taking pistols, hammers, or pistol ammo. Those are all free. And also, everything you put in your backpack weighs you down. Is that 50%? That, very much so, yes. So you said, uh, going back to bases and base building, how many shirts are consumed when one player respawns? Is it just one-to-one? One, -one? one shirt. Sure. Okay. How, how many yeah. So that's pretty sensitive intelligence. Okay. <laughs> what was the question about bandages? How, how much should you carry as a medic? How many bandages and blood plasma? Like, where that's, a, did them? that's really a personal preference thing. I carry less than most medics do. Uh, I actually go with the light load because I usually am doing two jobs when I play medic. I play medic and scavenger. At the yep. So I normally go with just maybe four or five bandages and maybe three blood plasma bottles. And I don't take a weapon, I take binoculars. Yep. And the reason why I do this is so that I have empty uh, inventory spots so that I'm constantly scavenging things on the battlefield. And because I'm always scavenging, you tend to run across a lot of bandages and blood plasma, so you're kind of stocking yourself on the battlefield. Sometimes you have to pick up the wounded yourself, and if you have a shit ton of plasma on you and bandages, it it hits you yeah. at that cap really quick. <laughs> oh so yeah, you'll be moving to, really slow. How would you carry that body? This is another problem. Body. This is another problem when you're carrying too much gear. If you are at 100% encumbrance, people cannot pick you up and carry you. And you cannot get inside of vehicles. 
fat. How do you pick yeah. people up anyway? Would that be like E or F? Or... They just uh, changed it. It used to be E, but they may have just changed that. They just made a change at the beginning of, well, today. <laughs> uh, so today. I, I'm not actually sure what the button is anymore. Uh, it's going to be either E or V. Uh, but the I current button's on V. Well, the, uh, they made V to where it now is the default button to pick up large items, and a body is considered a large item. I'm uh, kind of guessing it's going to be V. Ooh, and that actually would, might solve the problem of with critically wounded soldiers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because, uh, so actually, let me explain that real quick. Uh, normally when you die, you just leave behind a body on the ground. He's all covered with blood and looks kind of sad. Uh, but every once in a while, instead, what you're going to leave behind is what's called a critically wounded soldier. So you can always recognize them because they never have blood on them. They always lay on their side in a fetal position, all curled up. So it kind of looks like somebody's just sleeping on the ground. So you could pick up and carry a critically wounded soldier and you could take it to a hospital. And once you submit it to the hospital, it starts a 10 minute timer. At the end of that timer, it produces shirts for our team. Uh, the actual amount of shirts varies from war to war. Uh, I think this next war is only going to be producing four shirts per body. I know. But, but yep. supposedly they increase the chances of producing critically wounded soldiers. So that'll probably balance out some question with with yes. those shirts how ex like, can you like put in perspective just how expensive those are because they seem like the most expensive thing that you can make uh, they're fairly cheap it costs eight b mats per shirt whenever you're creating them in a factory all right that doesn't uh, help me at all is, yeah <laughs> b mat stands for basic material it is the most common resource in the game got so it. basically to produce a shirt takes like less than a couple of minutes of work uh, okay got it so shirts well, not the shirts themselves are not that expensive. The limiting factor is the factories. Uh, they can only produce so many shirts at once, so they kind of become a bottleneck. And they weigh a ton, too. You have to use the logistics to get them to the line. Yeah, definitely. And that's why the hospitals are so useful, is we can basically take enemy bo and friendly bodies and convert them into shirts by putting oh, them in the hospital. enemies, too. Ooh. Yes. At both sides. Alright, awesome. so, so what I was talking to the medic about... What I was talking to Medic about uh, earlier is there's been a really long time problem ever since they uh, introduced critically wounded soldiers is that frequently you're trying to loot their uh, backpack, which is always underneath them. If you just pressed E, it would instead pick up the critically wounded soldier and make you stand up, sometimes right in the middle of the freaking bullets that are flying. <laughs> uh, if they change it to V, that might actually have solved that problem. That would be really cool, actually. What's the difference uh, between the only yeah the only difference between the built-in hospital and the field hospital is the number of patients they can hold. Uh, the yep. built-in one is static; it's a permanent building on the map, uh, and it can hold like I don't know, probably about 50 patients or so. Uh, the field hospital we construct them ourselves, but they only hold I think six. I don't know; I've never actually counted the slots. It's a. Uh, it's eight. Eight? All right. Yeah. Whatever he says. He's a medic. I only play medic maybe once a month. <laughs> uh, does anyone else so have any questions stuff. before we move on? What's that? That's, I've seen so much. <laughs> the blood. The blood. Everywhere. Man, I'm gonna be walking around with a pistol, one clip, and like 67 bandages. Oh, uh, right. one, one heads up. Uh, if, if you really like this medical crap, join the Red Cross. It, it's a clan. They'll help oh. you out. Yeah, excellent. Oh, uh, I didn't know we had a new clan. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, clans or what we call regiments nowadays that are specialized. Uh, so I wasn't actually familiar with the Red Cross. That's actually really good to hear. I like to hear that. Right? Uh, I know. I didn't hear it. Careful, they'll come at you for trademark violation. <laughs> right? Red Cross is. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it on the download. The uh, slightly darker than Orange Cross. <laughs> right, anybody else have any questions before we move on here? All right, let's move on to right here. Yeah. So this this is barbed wire. Uh, barbed wire does not hurt you; it just makes you move really slow. So try not to walk through barbed wire. Barbed wire is built by players, which means that we can also destroy it. 
And in fact, there's two different ways to take it down. Uh, first, if you have a wrench, you can just crouch next to it and left click the barbed wire with the wrench. And after about 10 seconds, it'll be destroyed. Uh, please don't destroy this barbed wire if you have a wrench. I need it for future tutorials. Uh, now, because during that 10 seconds, you cannot move and you cannot cancel your action, so you're extremely vulnerable. You always want to try and do that from inside of some kind of cover. The wrench or the hammer? The wrench. Now, the other way we can destroy barbed wire is that the Colonials, and that is us, by the way, has a weapon called the Hydra's Whisper. It's like a Bangalore torpedo from World War II. So it's basically just a big pipe bomb that you carry over your shoulder, and you run up here and toss it under the barbed wire by pressing B, and then run away again. After five seconds, it'll explode, and it can destroy up to three strands of barbed wire at one time, if they're close enough to each other. All right, so let's talk a little bit about cover and how that works. Uh, if you walk up to this wall, you'll see that you get a shield icon that appears. <laughs> Good luck all of you getting around it. So you got side of the wall. Yeah, so how full that shield is tells you what your cover bonus is. So what the cover bonus does is, first off, there's really no bullet penetration in this game, except for like one or two items. Uh, so you can pretty much discount bullet penetration. It's all bullets are almost always stopped by the terrain. What the cover bonus does is any bullets that make it past the wall that actually hit you, cover bonus will reduce the amount of damage that they do to you. Also, anytime you have a cover bonus, you're also getting a accuracy bonus. Your weapon stability goes up a little bit. So your cover bonus is affected by the direction that you're facing. So if you face away from the wall, you lose your shield. And almost everything in this game will give you a cover bonus, even other players. So if you just stand next to one of your buddies, you'll see that you get a full shield. This is really important when you're playing Medic. You want to take the victim that you're healing and put them in front of you and use them as a meat shield. I like the way you think. It's perfect. Use your resources, resources wisely. No, Krieger yes. style. That's what that is. They and that. if... If you are the sucker who's being healed, don't just stand there doing nothing. Get your weapon out and protect your medic. Medic's I life is more important than yours, actually. I guarantee you I'll pull my pistol and shoot. And then might hit you <laughs> if you don't pull yours. Yeah, absolutely. And I wouldn't blame him for doing it. Are there commissars? Uh, that would be well, me. <laughs> Execution's awesome! Uh, Have you ever been uh, in a Turkish or the prison? Emperor. So, uh, airplane, I like it. This game is that. <laughs> so, the other thing with this game is anytime you have your crosshairs directly over the enemy, uh, the game will automatically aim at their chest. It is not possible to aim at their head. So, because of this, you can get into positions like at the tall part of this wall where I could shoot somebody over there, like Lobby Sim, and he's going to find it nearly impossible to shoot me. He would have to be relying on just the random chance that one of his bullets is going to spread upwards over the wall. So maybe 20 out of 30 of his shots is going to get to me. The same thing is true if I'm inside of a trench, or if I'm at a much higher elevation than you are. In all those cases, it's nearly impossible to kill the enemy with a gun. You need grenades, or artillery, tanks, or other uh, fun things like that. Jesus. Oh yes. Alright, this right here is an anti-tank trap. Its only purpose is it prevents vehicles from driving through it. You can climb over it. It does provide a little bit of cover, but it's not actually very good at it. And this is also built by players, which means you can destroy it as well. And in fact, these are destroyed exactly the same way you destroyed barbed wire. Thank you, Lord. In fact, almost everything in this game is made by players. It includes the weapons you use, the ammunition you're firing, all the gear you carry, things like these walls and fences. So, be careful with the supplies, be gentle with the supplies, don't waste stuff. Now, there are some permanent features in the map. And, in fact, buildings are a very important part of the game. Uh, there are three different classes of buildings. You have completely neutral buildings that neither side could ever own. But you can go inside them and you can use them for cover. So like if you crouch behind the window, you get a full shield. Uh, same thing if you stand at the wall inside the door frame. But what about this tiny them... window? 
Uh, you can't actually shoot through the tiny bar, unfortunately. I've tried. <laughs> uh, do keep in mind that anytime you use something like a door frame or a tree for your cover, that your player is right-handed. So you want the cover on the left side of your body. This will allow you to shoot around the cover. Alright, so a second type of building is called a garrison house. This building here is actually a destroyed garrison house. And what that means is that our faction can drive over here with a construction vehicle and use basic materials to repair the building. And once it's fully repaired, our faction now controls the building and it gains automatic defenses. So if any enemies get too close to it, the building itself will start shooting at them from those second story windows. It's very accurate and it does a lot of damage. It can even destroy tanks. So things are deadly as hell. Wow. Okay. And you can't get up to the second story windows. Yes, you can. Sure. You can. But only only with garrison houses and the third type of buildings. So with those, the way you do it is if you look at the walls, you'll see little white X's on these walls. If you stand next to the white X and press Q, it'll put you in the window directly above the X. But that will not work here because this building's destroyed. It has to be repaired. So there's no stairs. So you actually have literally have to press Q by an X. Exactly. Uh, some weird. destroyed buildings have kind of a ramp that goes up to the second floor that you can use. Uh, but repaired ones and uh, garrison houses don't. But still, getting into that window is a very well-protected position. The only way to kill you is to either completely destroy the building or to use poison gas to drive you out. Now, the third type of building is called a safe house. A safe house is exactly the same as a garrison house with AI defenses and all that stuff. But it is also a forward operating base. So that means that you can set your spawn there and it has a stockpile for weapons and ammo. Also, safe houses are much harder to destroy than a garrison house. And in fact, you have to destroy them from inside the building. Uh, so in my experience, it takes about 35 to 40 of those AT grenades to wipe out a fully upgraded safe house. Uh, so it is a serious bitch to take one down. Uh, it usually takes a team of like 10 to 15 people making multiple suicide wave attacks with the AT grenades to destroy an undefended safe house. Can they, can they still spawn into the safe house if it's being uh, attacked? Yes, until it is completely destroyed, they can still spawn as long as there are shirts in the stockpile. Jesus Christ, how the hell does anyone take it in this game? Uh, my favorite is artillery. <laughs> That's always the end. Yeah, during the early part of the war, you don't have that choice. At the very beginning of the war, all you have is AT grenades. So, so when you do that, you get a group of people like this right here, and we all take three or four AT grenades, and we just constantly suicide wave against it until it's gone. Well, trench. There's no, uh, Lovely. there's no napalm in this, right? Just gas. Not yet. Shit, it's like racks all over again. <laughs> yep, yep. So this game is kind of a simulator of a mix between World War One and World War Two technology. All right. Uh, does anybody have any questions before we move on? We're almost done with the tutorial here. Are you? Are you doing uh, another tutorial after this? I missed the first part. Yeah, I can... Uh, I haven't decided just one. logistics is to go out into the field go to a logistics town and find a crew who's already doing logistics ask them to join them and then they'll teach you how to do it on the job uh, we could go through the tutorial zone here but all I can really do is teach you how to use the buildings uh, I can't really teach you how we actually do logistics so high uh, hmm. all right so here we are uh, every once in a while you're gonna find terrain such as this grass uh, or bushes, these will provide concealment. So if you get into the grass and stand still, you become invisible. You can tell when you're concealed by looking in the top left corner of your screen. Uh, there will be an icon of an eyeball with a red slash through it. 
Now, while you are concealed, while you are concealed, you're allowed to aim your weapon so you can rotate, and you can even fire your weapon without losing concealment. So this is a great way to ambush the enemy, especially their uh, supply trucks and their tanks. The other side of it is, though, that if you are concealed and somebody walks next to you, you will become visible to that person. As oh, I'm sure a lot of you have already noticed. So, uh, because of this, what's going to frequently happen, at least if you're a team player, is that you're going to sometimes be the infantry who's escorting tanks. And your primary job is to protect the tank from the enemy infantry. There's lots of anti-tank weapons available to infantry, so they're very deadly. And what you're going to have to do is search terrain like this to see if there's anybody hiding in there trying to ambush your tanks. That's essential to combined arms doctrine. Yeah, that's great. And there might oh, be yeah, scouts combined, too. Uh, combined arms is crucial to this game, along with partisan operations too, uh, logistics, uh, cutting, and stuff like that. All right, so the best way to search terrain like this is you want to get a weapon such as your pistol, a submachine gun, or a bayonet, and just run through the terrain as fast as you can. And that's because you know that when you get next to the enemy, they will appear. Now, this is suicidal as hell. You will probably die in the process. So Good the first thing you need... Well, the, the problem is there's get always so much man. grass. Uh, the grenade thing doesn't really work because there's usually so much grass that you just don't have enough grenades for it all. You just spam, spam bayonets and charging through grass. Yeah, but there's also a good chance you're going to kill friendlies doing that. <laughs> but still, Acceptable your, losses. So your main job is just run through there, and if you get next to an enemy, alert your buddies. Tell the tanks that enemy's in there, and then try to kill them. As long as the tank survives, that's all that is important. Tanks take many hours of real-life time to build. You can respawn by clicking a button. How do you use a bayonet? Uh, press F to attach it to your rifle. And then left click. Do not right click. If you have a bayonet. I uh, see. Thank you. Which he does. You're welcome. Alright, the other thing with tanks is a tank constantly has to maneuver in order to survive in combat. So never stand directly in front or behind a tank that's currently fighting. Otherwise, they're going to run you over and they're going to do it on purpose. And they won't feel bad about it. Also, don't walk in the middle of the roads. You're going to get creamed by a supply truck. <laughs> uh, stay on the sides of the roads. Uh, there's vehicles such as supply trucks and jeeps that move so fast that they just can't really avoid hitting you. And they don't really try, to be honest with you. A lot of them get a giggle out of it. So make sure you look both ways before crossing the streets when I'm here. So no yeah, it's walking. actually a good idea, but it doesn't always help. <laughs> All right, this is one of the only places you can die on this entire island, so don't jump in the water just yet. All right, so the way swimming works is once you start swimming, it will start draining your stamina very rapidly. The more gear you're carrying, the faster your stamina will drain. If you are at 100% encumbrance, it's going to cut your swim distance in half. So once you your stamina gets down to somewhere between 5 and 10%, Sorry, once your stamina gets down somewhere between 5 and 10%, you drown. Also, if you stop swimming, your stamina does stop draining, but it will never go back up while you're still in the water. Stamina only goes back up on dry ground. This is especially important when you're in an amphibious assault. Uh, we do full-blown D-Day style beach landings. Uh, the type of uh, ship that we use to transport troops is relatively easy to fall out of. So if you ever fall out of the boat, do not try to swim to the boat. Hold completely still. Don't click any buttons at all. Uh, we got one drowner already. Hi. <laughs> Basic training. He gets a gold star. Yeah. <laughs> Darwin Award. Big train. Either you way, just hold, hold still. Don't click any buttons at all. The boat will turn around, and they can position themselves in such a way so that you can get into the boat by just pressing Q. And they're going to do this because we need every single person to land on the beach. The first couple of minutes of the beach landings is absolutely critical. Sorry. Uh, the first couple of minutes of the beach landing is absolutely critical to the success of the landing. Who died, by the way? Uh, it was Teacher or Treacher or something like that. I didn't quite see their name. Teacher Dane?
is the end of the basic tutorial. Uh, so we'll have another Q&A session here, and when we're done with that, I will take you over and show you how to view the war map and how to actually join the war. So feel free to ask any questions regarding any aspect of the game now. Any tips on yes, how we like should there's... find people to group up with? Let's do it one at a time. Uh, Tizzy first. Any tips on how we should find people to group up with? Uh, you could just join a squad. Oh yeah, it's been a pleasure, World War II guy. Uh, you can pretty much join up with any open squad. Most of them are more than uh, glad to welcome you in. Uh, some are a little bit more new player friendly than others, of course. Uh, yeah, I do advise... It's a half track. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus this, this is how you lose a vehicle. That'll buff okay. out. This is this is also part of basic training. What not? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, very much. Uh, a lot of the things I teach when we get to other stuff like uh, advanced uh, defensive building is more what to not do than what to actually do. I'm stuck. Uh, they'll be stuck. There I'm gonna I'm start promoting I people. That's okay. So, That's yeah, go ahead. I'm actually out of commend, so I don't have any way to promote them. So I appreciate you oh, doing that. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, please no. do not. Right. Don't waste any commends on me. I'm already plenty ranked up. All right. All so right. what hey. I do advise as new players is try to find some of the squads that are larger that are run by the regiments. And that's because most of the regiments, especially the ones that have been around a long time, have very experienced players who can help you learn how to play the game faster. We have barely scratched the surface of this game. There is an outrageous amount of stuff to learn. I have been learning, I've been playing this game for 1200 hours. I still learn new things almost every day. Is he moving on one of those ones with Oh man. Uh, so one at a time, uh, somebody else was asking about how to gain rank. Uh, so to gain rank, what happens is uh, other people have to promote you. Uh, so while you're playing the game, you will slowly gain what's called commendation points. Uh, you can see how many commendation points you currently have by hitting F1 and looking directly underneath your name, and it'll show you there. Most of you will probably have none right now. Uh, yeah, I'm about to spend these. So you can spend these points on other players to promote them. Uh, there's uh, about three different ways to do it. Uh, if you're both standing on open ground like this, you can just alt click them, and you'll see a menu. Uh, the most important things on that menu is commendation, if you have any points. And also, you can voice mute people by all clicking on them. And believe me, you're going to want to do that. Thank God. Thank God, yes. Uh, the other way you could do it is if you hit the <laughs> F1 key, there will be a list of every single person in the same region that you are. And uh, you can left-click their name in that list. And finally, if you're in the same squad as somebody, their name will appear in the squad list. And I think you right-click them there. The, the UI is not real damn consistent, unfortunately. Either way, you can get to the same menu in the squad list, too. On that note, uh, oh. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Do you guys line up real quick? Line up yeah, so I can make get him. This. He's going to promote you guys at least probably as many as he can. I don't know how many like, come in. Just has. do a line. I have 15. I, I think I have enough. But, you know. Uh, I don't think that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, but hit the guys he can. The just kind of hit them at random. What's the benefit of a promotion? None. You look cool. Yeah, the only there's exactly there's two abilities you gain. There's only two abilities you gain from gaining rank, and that's at Staff Sergeant. You're allowed to start making posts on the map, and also at Staff Sergeant you can create your own regiment. There is no other benefit for gaining rank. The only thing it does is it will give players a very rough idea of how experienced you are. Uh, but the truth is that's not even very reliable anymore. Uh, there are so many players now that actually you can gain rank a lot faster nowadays than you used to be able to. So it question took me about like... Uh, yeah, go ahead. What was your question? Sorry to interrupt you. But, uh, no, it's all right. is, is there like a good place for like lists of like... Uh, I know Medic had mentioned like the Red Cross if you want to be a Medic or, you know, whatever logistics or whatever you want to get into. Is there a good place to like... Or a yeah. uh, resource for that? So Fox... That list? Uh, Foxhole does have an official Discord. Uh, I think if you hit the escape button, there's a button that takes you to it. Uh, but in the Foxhole official Discord, there is a channel just for clan advertising or regiment advertising. Uh, but not all regiments advertisers. Such as my own regiment does not advertise. 
uh, we're pretty uh, exclusive about how we recruit. Holy shit. Okay, I went out of command. We have over 26 people here. I want right, to so, so the crane uh, over here. Speaking was, of which. I'm assuming the crane is used to put, like, supplies in the vehicles for logistics? Uh, for certain types of vehicles. Actually, one moment, somebody else sent a message. Uh, so, World War II guy, yes, I do belong to a regiment, which is the one CMD tag that you see in front of my night. <clears throat> it stands for First Colonial Marine Divisions. Uh, we do a little bit of everything in the game. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much us. <laughs> nice. If I see you guys uh, on the field, I'll promote you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks, bro. So, I can say if you're interested in joining one CMD, we're actually not going to be recruiting for this war. But we'll probably open recruitment again in the next war afterwards. Uh, otherwise, if our squad is open, you're always welcome to join our squad just to play with us. And uh, to join the regiment, it's kind of the same thing. You just got to play with us, and you got to do it for a long time. Uh, we are pretty selective about our recruiting. Uh, we're mainly just looking for people who are team players more than anything. Uh, it's not so much based on your skill. It's just, you know, how well do you work with the rest of the regiment? All right, uh, so somebody else had a question, but I missed it. I would think I was asking about oh, the crane. Uh, yeah, and also I uh, asked the size limit of the regiments. I don't know of any size uh, limit. Uh, so what the crane does is it will allow us to put things onto a flatbed truck. That was the truck that he drove into the water over here. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. So you have things like this right here. This is a resource container. Its purpose is it holds raw resources that we uh, salvage from the back mines. And it can hold more resources than anything else in the game. So we'll use a crane to put this on the back of a flatbed truck. And then you would drive the truck over to a refinery. There's one over this way, except I'm trapped. <laughs> there we go. So there's a refinery over here. And you can see a refinery has a built-in crane to it. So you can use this crane to pick the uh, container off the truck and put it on this little driving way and it will automatically open up the menu for the refinery and allow you to transfer all the raw resources into the refinery uh, so that you can make usable materials out of it. Uh, same thing with what's called a shipping container. So, uh, well, yeah, pick that up and just set it like on the ground over here somewhere, please. So a shipping container looks like this. So it looks exactly the same as a raw resource container, except it has a closed top. And those are for transferring manufactured materials. A shipping container can hold up to 40 crates of items. Uh, so it's the same thing. You would just take uh, stuff out of the factory or the warehouses, uh, put it into a shipping container, put it on the back of a flatbed, and then drive it up to the front lines and hope there's a crane at the front lines so that you can unload it. Can you um, capture enemy factories? Yes. Almost everything in this game can be captured. There's only a handful of items that cannot. Do you have that to do the factory first? Can you move the shipping container again? I'm trapped. Oh, uh, let me set it up real quick. Alright, somebody get into the crane and pick up the shipping container. I was trying to see if I could find another way to die. Uh, there is one other way to die. At least, oh, hold on. Uh, yes, Alphenius, Alf you're correct. You capture the factory first, you destroy it, and then when we repair it, it become it belongs to our side. It's actually a little bit more complicated. <laughs> I imagine okay, the uh, region that we're in right now is region locked to our specific faction. They can't come in this area, correct? That's correct. This is the home island. This is where all the tutorial zones are located. Also, if you exit the game, when you rejoin the game, you always spawn here in the home island over in the central area. Uh, near right, the neat. deployment zone. Who, uh, how is like everything with manufacturing organized? Like, how, how do you drive demand for X, Y, or Z? Because it seems like logistics right. and manufacturing is kind of a complicated deal. It is a complicated deal. So, you, most people work in a team. Uh, there's four basic phases to logistics. I'm not going to go over logic in detail. It would take a couple hours to teach it to you. Right. Uh, just a general so gist of like a very how general you group up with people and like we're gonna make a bunch of shit. Or what? Yeah, pretty much. And there's two different ways most people go about doing it. 
so let me first just kind of describe Lodgy in a very broad term. So it's divided up into four phases. First, you have to harvest raw resources, and you have to take those raw resources to the refinery uh, and refine them into usable materials. Then you take those usable materials to factories and construction yards like what I'm standing in front of here, or the garages where you build vehicles and things like that. Uh, usable materials are what you actually use to produce everything. So once you've uh, produced everything in the factory, then you have to take trucks and take all the crates out of the factory and actually drive them to the front lines and put them into the stockpiles of the forward operating bases. So because of all that stuff, each of those things is kind of time consuming of its own. By yourself as a solo player. So uh, you're almost always going to work in a team. Uh, well, I mean, there are ways to do it as a solo player. Generally, you'll just pick one thing, like harvesting resources and just turning those resources over to other people. Or maybe just taking stuff from the factory to the front lines. Let's try it instead of trying to... How, how does, like, the front lines, like, communicate, like, oh, shit, we need grenades or bullets or these guns? Is there a way that is efficient that they can communicate that? Capitalism. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Blackbart, if you're talking, I can't hear you. Are there, like, radios or something? Hold up, uh, If you look at the text chat, somebody just requested ammo somewhere. Hey, uh, can we steal enemy supplies? I mean, resources? Like, raid their trucks? Yes. I think he's having Mac troubles. But yes, you can. Okay, that's probably quicker than actually gathering them. Hmm. Yeah, but they tend to be guarded by a lot of guns. Yeah, are you talking about like... No, we can't hear you, Black Bart. He might be AFK. No, he's his mic. Is uh. Things about his might have ran out of battery or something. But uh, it's much easier. You're talking about savaging on the battlefield. Like, you can grab their rifles. You can use their weapons. You can grab their rifles and stuff like that. But in our bunker, but it, it, it's weight dependent. Now, if you ambush a Lodgy, it's going to be... You blow Check. up a Lodgy. There you go. There we go. Uh, the VoIP on this can be a little buggy sometimes. If it does bug out on you, there's two things you can do to fix it. Uh, first, you can hit Escape, go to Options, and go to Voice. And there's a button that says Reconnect. About one out of four times, it will fix your problem. Otherwise, you got to exit the game and rejoin. Oof. Big oof. Good four point. Yeah, it kind of sucks. <laughs> Uh, uh, how how well does the VoIP end up working when we have a shit ton of people around you out in front line stuff? Oh, it's fucking uh, crazy. It's, it's usually okay. Uh, the buggiest the VoIP tends to get is actually right here in the home island. And the most common bug is either uh, you can't uh, communicate with people out in the war zone in your squad or vice versa. Uh, and also sometimes when you're traveling from one region to another, sometimes your VoIP will just totally crash. Mm. But it's fairly rare. It's not that frequent. That's cool. Impressive from a programming standpoint. Opus, baby. Opus audio codec. This is kind of... Right, so, uh, so, like I was saying, uh, that was one way that a team will usually do uh, logic. The other way is they'll just create a chain. So you'll have like three or four people in the back harvesting resources. A couple of people driving those resources to the refineries and then from the refineries to the factories, and then a whole separate group of people driving from the factories to the front lines. Uh, so the clans that specialize in logistics tends to do that. I, know, uh, I got a question. Sure. Um, so like I know, uh, like, uh, I think it was Medic was saying that you can like scavenge on the battlefield, but can you hit enemies that are doing that logistics part, like as they're transported? Are you oh, yeah. Big enough group and just take their resources? Yep. Uh, it's something I love to do. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and you can even do that solo, but of course, you're always more effective when you work in a group. Uh, and we do partisan cuts sometime. It was like a full regiment. So there'll be like 30 of us back behind the enemy lines. And we'll actually create a base behind our lines and operate off that base and plant ourselves right into a supply route and dig in with the fences and everything and totally disrupt them. 
Uh, that is one of the best ways to take over territory. Stop them out. Perfect. Yes, Thank indeed. Uh, other questions? Uh, somebody was private messaging me something much earlier and I didn't get a chance to read what it was. I have a question how lighting works at nighttime. Like right now I can see you in a circle. How do yeah. you see so the any, any Anybody past that circle is invisible. And that circle shrinks more and more as it gets later. Uh, so around midnight to 1 a.m. game time, you get really limited vision. Uh, it is possible to see vehicles outside of your night range if there's somebody in the driver's seat, uh, because it automatically turns on headlights. Are there like uh, flashlights or any kind of lighting system we can set up around bases or anything? No, the only thing like that is mortars have a uh, type of round which is a flare which will light up the battlefield. Uh, uh, what's the game day-night cycle? Like how long is it? In real time? Uh, each uh, day and night take 30 minutes each. And those of you sending me private messages, it's actually easier for me to read if you use local text. Uh, so hold on, let me read what this guy said. Uh, there's... Uh, so Red Killer, yeah, microphones are fairly important, but you could definitely get along without them. A lot of people play without mics. It's just, you know, it depends on how good of a typer you are. You know, I'm terrible at typing, so I have to have a mic. By the way, thanks for doing this. Oh, cool. It's a pleasure. No, I actually do this for fun. Uh, there is, the best way can there is game. no real fast travel in this game. Uh, Spawn Island and actually get to the, the battle. Uh, I'll show you how to do that as soon as we're finished with all the Q&A. <laughs> right on. Uh, I'm going to be starting another class of teaching people the basic tutorial. Uh, once we wrap this up. So anybody that missed the first part of my tutorial, uh, you could just follow along. I'm going to the line after this, so if you guys want to go follow me to the line. Right. Uh, yeah, so uh, show them how to use the war situation map and kind of explain that to them and then just show them how to deploy. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have any questions before he takes you over? How, uh, how important was the first part of your uh, training? Like the very first quarter? The, uh, the most important part is at the beginning of the weapons training. Uh, if you want, I can actually just do that here because it only takes a minute. So the absolute most important thing that I teach through my entire training is real simple. You can shoot and aim and see further by aiming at the corner of your screen than you can by aiming at the top center of your screen. If you take your weapon out and just kind of move your mouse along the top edge of the screen, You'll see that it zooms out when you get to the corners. Uh, no, uh, Tizifo, I don't see where you are, but if you have a crate, you cannot pull individual items out of the crate. Instead, you have to submit the crate to a stockpile to get anything out of it. Alright, so like I said, you can see further by aiming at the corner of the screen. This is critical. So you always want to rotate your screen so that the corner of your screen is facing the enemy. Uh, there's two different ways to rotate your screen. Uh, you can hold down your middle mouse button and move your mouse. You can also use the period and the comma key. Uh, the advantage of period and comma is it allows you to rotate while you're... Oh, sorry, I've got hiccups real bad today. Uh, period and comma allows you to rotate while you're aiming, so that's a pretty big advantage. A lot of people remap period and comma either to some mouse buttons or to Q and E. But if you do remap it to Q and E, you're going to have to remap about half the keys in the game. It's honestly a really big pain in the butt. Brain up, down on which key? Say again, please. A uh, crown, uh, up, uh, a down, a uh, quick, quick B. Crane up, down on which key? Oh, uh, you move the crane by holding down yeah, the right mouse button. I that. can't tell who's talking. Hold down, down the right mouse button to move it. And while you're holding down the right mouse button, left click. Left click. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. All right. So um, another another important aspect in combat is the white line that goes from your weapon to your uh, target reticule represents the maximum range of your weapon. So if you aim really far away from yourself, you'll see the line starts to fade away. If you're shooting at a target that is at past the end of your white line. 
or inside the faded portion of the white line, you're going to do little or no damage at all to the enemy. And also, laying prone is a bad idea in combat uh, for several reasons. Uh, first, it makes you extremely vulnerable. It's very easy to kill somebody who's laying down. And also, it's extremely difficult for you to shoot a moving target when you're laying down, especially if they're moving from side to side. Uh, so, like, just one person only just kind of lay down, like, right about where I'm standing. Uh, like Teletubby, that'll be perfect. Rotate towards me. Everybody else kind of leave a little gap around them. So just face me, Teletubby, and get your weapon out. And when I say go, I want you to try to shoot me before I get to you. Oop, I don't have any ammo. Okay. So do this. <laughs> All right, so where you got a weapon? All right, so just try to shoot me before I get to you, warrior. Okay? Ready? And... Uh... Let's see it again. Either way, the simple fact is, warrior cannot rotate fast enough to track me when I'm moving side to side. It is hard to hit a... It is hard to move a, hit a moving target even when you're standing up. When you're laying down, it's nearly impossible. And also, if somebody throws a grenade at you, you normally have a few seconds to run away from the grenade, but it takes two and a half seconds to stand up. So you're pretty much screwed if somebody tosses a grenade your way. So the only time you ever want to lay prone in combat is if you're staying in a wide open field with no cover like this, and if you're still at long range to the enemy. Uh, laying prone inside of concealment it can also give you an advantage uh, just because of the game mechanics, most of the bullets will fly over your head. But do keep in mind when you're laying down, it's hard to hit that moving target. I mean, I always crouch before I shoot, yeah. Yeah, uh, yes, you're absolutely correct. Crouching is a totally legit tactic. Uh, you can go between crouching and standing very rapidly. In fact, if you're crouched and start to sprint, you automatically stand up. Just keep in mind, as a colonial... Mobile combat favors our combat style. You generally want to move from cover to cover, sit in cover for just a moment, crouch there, take a few shots, and move somewhere else. If you stay in one spot too long, you're just going to get a grenade. And if you just stand in the open, clinking at somebody, they're going to blast you. You got no chance. And try not to bunch up too much. Grenades are a thing. All right, uh, anybody have any last questions before uh, Medic takes you over to deploy and all that? So uh, Warden's playstyle is defensive then? You can take yeah, Warden weapons right? favor okay. defensive and long range combat. Our weapons favor uh, mobile and close to mid range combat. Oh my Holy god. Holy Jesus Christ. Holy Jesus it's Christ. It's another fucking class. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Training course overlap, ladies and gentlemen. So. This is the construction the crossover yard. episode. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's uh, move over. If you were major, let's go. So we're not interfering with him. Right. So if you have a flatbed truck, the flatbed truck oh is, of course, the largest land logistic you to carry large shippable containers, such as the resource container. Where'd Black Bart go? Otherwise, we've actually been carrying things just now. Uh, yeah, there was a Reddit post that hit like sixty thousand. Uh, upvotes that went to the front page of Reddit. So there's a huge number of people that joined because of that Reddit post. And also, That's why I'm some... here. Yep. That's on sale. So put them on the back of your flatbed truck and then deliver them to various destinations. Popular streamers talking a lot of good things about the game right now. So there's just a huge influx of new players. Uh, and it's actually going to cause all kinds of crazy insanity. <laughs> oh, Stalingrad. <laughs> it's going to happen. Well, the, the, veter chaos. the veterans are going to go just insane because new players tend to do a lot of bad things. <laughs> but they'll have to just live with it. Alright. Uh, Question. Goes. Yeah? Uh, anything we take, do we take anything? Uh, any items we get in here, do we, do we bring in a deployment? No, no we do not. Uh, when you deploy, you lose everything you're carrying from here. 
you do get a handgun and some ammo, right? Yeah, every time, yeah. Any time you spawn, you start with your pistol, two magazines of ammo, and a hammer. What's the Is quickest there... way to get a better gun? <laughs> Say again? What's the quickest way to get a better gun after you deploy? Uh, usually you're going to be right next to a building that will hopefully have some weapons inside of it. Otherwise, you're going to have to kind of hunt around. Uh, if you use your map, you can hover your mouse over the icons of the different bases, and it will tell you what the inventory of that base is. Question. I see. Thanks. Sure. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what's the best, uh, let's say this, equipment to carry on, general equipment, when you're in front lines? Like, how uh, many ammo, gun, uh, solar, that sort of thing. Yeah, I understand. So you want to take just a weapon, two, maybe three magazines of ammo, really I advise two, and one or two bandages, and you don't really need much else beyond that. Uh, there are a few other things you could carry, like grenades and uh, gas masks, but those are situational. You want to carry the right equipment for the right uh, job. But generally, you're best off by just keeping yourself lightweight and moving fast. Uh, in fact, if I take a weapon with me, a rifle or something, I always drop my hammer and my pistol. Uh, yeah, you are fairly expendable. In fact, uh, do not get discouraged. This game is incredibly deadly. Uh, it is normal for a new player like you guys to die within seconds of getting into the front line. I expect, uh, yeah, I, I expect half of them to die before we even make it. What? If you just aim at your corners, that will double the amount of time that you survive. But even then, uh, you're usually going to die within a couple of minutes at the most. You're not exactly instilling confidence as my uh, commanding officer. All those scrubs in Arlington Cemetery, they should have just respawned. <laughs> well, See, uh, honestly, it's I'm just part of the game. And sometimes, I mean, sometimes you're going to respawn right in the middle of an artillery barrage and you'll die before you even know what's happened. Yeah, you know, just shit happens. It's just part of the game. <laughs> I respawn right on the road and got ran over. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. I respawned right in front of an enemy tank when it was shooting at the base I spawned in front of. And it hit me instead. <laughs> uh, just I think I'm going to spend the next 30 minutes rebinding my keys for Q&E. Uh, it is kind of a painful process because whenever you rebind a key, the game likes to automatically rebind other keys that were associated with it kind of a pain in the butt. I just use uh, mouse 4 and 5 if you've got the thumb buttons. It works pretty well. Yeah, honestly, yeah. mouse 4 and yep, 5. That works. That does work. I use those buttons actually for my VoIP. That but, makes uh, a lot more sense, actually. And um, once you kind of learn how to use it, there's a config file that you can edit to rebind your mice or your buttons, I mean, and that's actually in some ways a little bit easier. I'm gonna, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain. I'm gonna take him to the deployment table before the next class comes up. <laughs> All right, I'm in class over yeah. here. Yeah, I'm gonna just coming. go scoop up new people for another class. On me. Thanks right. again for joining. Follow yep, me before. It's pleasure. And medic, thank you for all the help, bud. Thank you, senpai. Uh, let's unload it. Ignore this class. Yep. Keep going. And then right, right click to aim. Left click to shoot. There's no friendly fire. So all right, boys. If you see Major in the field, commend him. He spends a lot of time here. We'll okay. take a left. And we're gonna go deploy. But before we do that, let's look at the situation board by pushing E and see what who needs help here. The situation is shit. Hey, look. They're fighting back. This is not very colorblind friendly. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we are currently between wars, so what you see right now is actually not that important. Uh, the next war starts tomorrow at 12, or at noon, Eastern Standard Time. How can you tell where the fighting is based on this? Well, it used to flash, but I don't think it's doing that. All right. If you zoom in a little bit, you can see the uh, blue icons versus the green. Where are the green? Oh, there we go. Deploy area to get the flashing dots. Oh, I see oh, it. Thanks. Follow me. 
follow me, guys. If you're gonna move to get deployed, we're gonna go now. Alrighty. I don't know how we're gonna do all this deployment here. So, uh. Hold E. Don't push anything. In. Hold the crap. Where are y'all deploying? Uh, where do we click? Uh, okay, so. Fnac Coast. Above Westgate. They look like they're getting wrecked for some reason. So, we could probably deploy there. Reinforcements needed. From the top one or the bottom one? Uh, Macha Keening. Macha Keening. Macha Keening inside of Fnac. Yeah, Coast. there's too many people here. Yeah, they'll spread it out. They'll send us in fives. If you once you spawn, just make sure you grab you save your spawn to that area. Sorry, did you did you say the one closest to the bridge or the one like to the right and below it? I go to Fanox Coast and you want to spawn the one away from the bridge. Watch as keen. Ah, uh, okay. I had to I had to zoom in further. Okay. Alrighty. And it should uh put you in the queue. This war is just for practice. The real war starts tomorrow. Alrighty, boys. Once he's spawned, you do what? I cut out for me. Hey, if you're brand new... Oh, it's raining here. Holy shit. Alright, make sure you save...